everyone. Welcome to It's a Wild, Wild, Wild Mount. I am the DM, and with me, my wonderful players. Hello, wonderful players. Hi. Hi. Oh, don't sound so excited Hola. there. <laughs> Hello, uh, Lord of Marf. <laughs> everybody's saying, oh, hi, hello, we're going to die today. Um, we're going to have fun. <laughs> The shortest session ever. Didn't wow. Way to think positive. The power of positive thinking there, folks. All righty. So uh, announcements, and then we'll get right into it. Uh, so first announcement, uh, we are once again sponsored by our good friends at Never Ending. So have you ever played a game and something so amazing happened in that game. You were like, oh, man, this is going to make a great story. And then you try to tell people the story and they don't get it because, you know, they just kind of like had to be there. It's in those moments that you wish you had like a movie or like you could show them something <laughs> that could kind of put them in that moment. And then you realize, oh, I, I, I don't have any drawing skills. I, I, I can't put all this stuff together. That's where Never Ending comes in in handy. Uh, it's a brand new, amazing web-based visual storytelling platform. Super easy to use. It's so easy even I can use it. Um, and the way it works is you can create the characters that uh, that are part of your stories, whether it's D&D, &D, whether you are actually trying to make something animated. Any of the stories, any of the characters that you create you can use their character builder and the not only can it be used for your tabletop games or your social media, but it's a good way for you to really kind of visualize and bring to life these characters. Um, the way the character builder works, uh, you can create, you know, body type, different types of bodies, hairstyles, eyes, ears, outfits, weapons, accoutrement, all these cool things that will help bring these characters to life. Um, once you have them, uh, as I said before, you can use them in your tabletop games, you can create tokens with them, um, and they're, it's not up quite yet, but they are putting in scene builders. Uh, it's, it's part of what NeverEnding is putting together, and you'll be able to put them into these scenes and animate them, they, amazing stuff, right? Uh, and right now, Never Ending 2.0 is up and running. So what does that mean? It means that it's a hell, the layout is so much more user-friendly than it was before. It's a lot easier to navigate. Uh, there's more customization options, and they keep adding more every week. Um, but also, uh, you, it can, it's not only user, more user-friendly, it is more mobile-friendly. So if you wanted to use it on a tablet or your phone, you can absolutely do that now. Um, they have backgrounds where you can put like spooky castle or, you know, forest setting. I'm a druid um, or, you know, I'm in the tavern having my drink. You know, what, what are those things? Um, you can, again, create tokens uh, for virtual tabletops. Um, so if you're using anything like we are, like Roll20, uh, Owl Bear Rodeo, um, all, you know, there's a couple of different options as far as virtual tabletops are concerned. You can create tokens of your characters to put into those, into your games. Uh, and my favorite part that they just implemented is the random NPC generator. You just push a button and it will just randomly create uh, it, uh, just any kind of character. Like it's just clothing, skin color, body type, uh, you know, prosthetics, like all of these crazy, all of the options that you have, they'll just randomly create it. You'll also randomly create a name, background, and you can change these things if you're not happy with them. But it just, if you're like me, creating a million NPCs for your game, this is going to be really, really helpful. And also, it's very helpful if you're just a player and you're just looking for ideas. Like you're getting ready to play a game and you're not sure what you want your character to look like or you know, the vibe or anything. It's really helpful to have this generator. And and I'm I'm not going to lie. It's probably one of my favorite things about never ending 2.0 right now um so when you get the chance uh you can go onto their character builder 
um, and you can create these. So, but here is, if you haven't tried it yet, you need to try it the whole month of July because they're doing this whole Christmas in July where every single one of the character options are going to be free for you to use. So normally you'd have to pay for a subscription to get access to some of the things. Some of it you get for free as well. No, July, you get it all for free. So, and you get to keep all of the things that you create after you create them and you download them, they're yours, right? So um, coming, like I said, just, we only got a couple more, we've got a few more days, a week or so before, you know, July is going to be here. Christmas in July, all the character options. Really want to take advantage of that. Trust me, really great. You can see all of, see, I, we've done our characters and we have them here in, in, in the overlays of the stream. So please, yeah, get creative, have fun with it. Uh, the character builder is on beneverending.app. Um, and you can just, if you're interested in learning more about who they are and, and how they, you know, created all of these things, uh, you can just go to beneverending.com and you will have access to not only the character builder, but all of that other information as well. So again, thank you so much, Never Ending, for uh, sponsoring us. We really appreciate it and we love, we love what you do. Keep doing it. All right. Uh, second announcement. Just want to remind everybody that uh, you, the viewer, have the ability to give inspirations uh, to either individual players or the group as a whole. So make sure that when you actually do purchase those inspirations with your channel points, which are called gold coins. Oh, we just lost somebody. Oh, we lost Groovy. Fucking Groovy. Hold on. Damn it, Groovy. Damn it, Groovy. Groovy's playing his music somewhere else. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, he just up and disappeared. You don't want to play anymore. What the hell? Uh oh. Hold on a second. Hold on. Always, as usual, we're gonna always have these technical technical issues. We try to fit. There we go. Groovy decided to come on back. All right. Sorry about that, folks. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, uh, everybody has the ability to give inspirations to either individual players or the group. You only have the ability to do it twice per stream. So, you know, make sure that they count and make sure you let everybody know who you want to have those inspirations. But if you want to kind of spice things up and you feel a little bit salty, you can give me inspirations. Now, the inspiration can be used, you know, depending on the situation. It might be uh, either somebody that they're fighting or maybe somebody who is helping the group. Uh, that inspiration will come in handy. Uh, but that's up to all of you as well. The players cannot give themselves inspirations, but they can give each other inspiration or the group as well. But they are also limited by two each. Uh, so. Remember, please use it. It's a lot of fun. It's been it's been very helpful. Also, uh, helps you interact with us as well. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, all righty. And and if uh, this, your inspiration is not used by the end of the stream, it does get refunded. So uh, don't worry. You will get those those channel points back if it doesn't get. And the very last uh, announcement that I have for today. Just finished up session four of Monster Hearts 2, our Whisper Bank campaign, uh, this past Monday. Um, there are only two more sessions left. So if you haven't started watching any of them, you can actually start catching up on YouTube. On our YouTube page, we have the first two sessions there. The third will be up by the end of this week, uh, by tomorrow or Saturday. And um, session four is right now here on Twitch on VOD. So you can uh, watch it here as well. Um, our next session isn't going to be till July 12th. So you do have time to actually catch up 
on what you've missed, but it's it's getting really crazy. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So if you haven't you have you haven't caught it yet, and that's something you're interested in, please by all means uh, check it out on our YouTube page and uh, also here on the VOD. And with that, I think it's time we get this party started. Are we oh, done wait. with the giveaway? Hold on. Uh, uh, oopsie had something. Um, so DM, you have an inspiration for whatever will have the best reaction. We have two group inspirations and Squall has an individual inspiration. All right. Yeah. Uh, so just make sure, yeah, uh, please feel free to remind a group, uh, when, you know, when things are going on, uh, about those inspirations, want to make sure that they are getting used. Because um, they do make a difference, without a doubt. Um, and what was uh, you had a uh, uh, shady? You said you had something. Uh, no, I was asking if we finished with the giveaway. Oh yeah, no, the giveaway was last week. Okay, it was, it was only last week. Um, by the way, congratulations to everybody who won last week. Uh, uh, the the prints have finished printing. And we will be still getting them out as soon as we possibly can to everybody. So just ask for patience. Uh, we'll get them to you. 3D printing is not exactly a fast thing. So just bear with us. Um, all right. So now with that, it looks like we should get ready to enter the pit of death. All right. That, uh, let's uh, get some fight music going. Where we left off last week, uh, the group finding themselves in an arena style uh, setting Create, seemingly created for you by Leopold uh, to help train you. He gave you some some tips of of what you should do in instances where you find yourself in battle and fighting and combat. Um, he gave you quite a few uh, tips and reminded you consistently of these tips. Some of you took some of those tips to heart. Others, not so much. Um, and you barely scraped by uh, a battle with a giant crocodile. After fighting that crocodile, there was a little bit of a critique session by Leopold, where he upon gave you his thoughts of how you might want to continue. And then you were set upon by a large stone golem. Now, after fighting this golem for some time and realizing you were doing little to no damage to it, you began trying to come up with some creative ways to fight it and basically calling what he was seeing boring. Um, he basically told Norman to jump into the arena and have a good time. With that, Norman, the giant iron golem, jumped into the arena, a large sword apparated into his hand, and that is where we left off. Now, because there is now a new combatant in the arena, we are going to, I'm going to ask you all to re-roll your initiative. Alrighty, so. Drina, what did you get? 13. 13. Galen. Uh, finally, uh, 23. All right, Leah. That one, please. Uh, 
Is what about with your initiative bonus? Like that would be a six. Six, yeah. Don't don't short yourself. Don't trust me. This is not the time to short change yourself. Uh, Squall. Fourteen. Uh, sixteen. Excuse me. S sixteen. Uh, Rowan. <clears throat> Eleven. Phoebe. Eleven. Eleven. Sora. Nine. Nine. All right. And okie dokie. So that is. Okay, so at the very top of the round, we have Norman. So Norman has jumped into the arena. He is currently uh, standing with the sword at the ready uh, in between Norman and the stone golem who... Uh, is currently um, uh, who is currently I'm trying to I can't find my notes I know he has something on him that is giving him disadvantage currently Actually, I can't remember what that is so I apologize for that um, uh, but I believe Jarena that's you because uh, you're the one that's concentrating on a spell. So what do you remember what spell it was that you had cast on him? It was a debuff uh, Ray of Enfeeblement. It gets him, he deals half damage. Half damage, right. Okay. So not disadvantage, right. Okay, so it's half damage. Okay, so just perfect. Thank you for that. Um, I apologize. A lot happening going on this week. Um, all right, so Norman has jumped into the arena. Uh, sword in hand. Where are you going, Squall? That's no, you're staying right where you are. Um, <laughs> that's where you were. Don't move. Um, I, I, that wasn't me. Okay, <laughs> I still moved to Owlbear. I'm sorry. I, I zoomed in and I guess I moved with my finger. Okay, um, so Norman moves, and uh, just again for everybody's, uh, um, Information, just so you're aware, that large green circle is Rowan's Entanglement uh, spell, which is still active. She is currently still concentrating on that spell. Um, so Norman actually will go to the other side of the Stone Golem. And he is going to use the help action. Um, and you watch as Norman grabs, takes the sword in his hand and begins poking the sword into the stone golem's head, but not like attacking him more like think, think, think like a very, like I'm touching you kind of thing. Um, so that will give the next person who attacks the stone golem advantage on that attack. Alrighty. Uh, so with that, uh, next uh, in the turn is Galen. Very confused as to what the fuck is going on. <laughs> um, Karina. Hmm? Uh, just a question: because Norman went out of melee, do Galen and Squall get an attack of opportunity? If they would like to take it. Well, actually, it would only be Squall. It, is he considered an ally? Or you is he... You don't, you don't know? Oh. It, mm, <laughs> I am not going to take an attack. <laughs> okay. Because I am already too damn weak to fathom the strength. All right, fair enough. I was just pummeled recently, so I'm still barely conscious. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Before before you actually take your turn, uh, can you roll me a perception check, please? Sure. sure. Wait, who? Me or Galen? Oh no, sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, yeah, I got confused. No, I'm sorry. It's Galen's turn. Uh, got no, it. Galen. Got it. Okay. Yeah, Galen, you can roll a perception check for. Since it's sunny, it's disadvantage. Mm-hmm. All right, eighteen. Eighteen. And that is disadvantage. Okay. Uh, so. Previously, uh, and and all around you, you can see in these uh, in these uh, braziers uh, that uh, are now lit, thanks to uh, thanks to Leopold. Um, the columns in the middle, some of you will actually recall, uh, began to get heated while you were some of you were standing on them, causing some damage. Galen, as you're standing there preparing your uh, whatever your your move is going to be, you look just very quickly by the column and you can see in the side of the column, which wasn't really um, visible prior. Well, actually, it might have been, but nobody actually bothered to look. Um, it looks like some kind of square, like, indent. To, uh, on on the side of the column. You don't know what that means. You'd have to get closer to look at it if you wanted to. Um, but that's what you can see very quickly during your perception check. All right. So now it is your turn. What would you like to do? I swear I have plans, and then new information keeps throwing me off. So just just give me a little second. Um, I'm going to walk over to Leah real quick. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. what, what, do I, what do I say in six seconds? Uh, <laughs> I know. What do you say? Come on. All right. In a fight. All right. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. So, Leah. <laughs> Uh, could you go? Could you run towards the group and try to figure out a, pl a a trap to stop this thing? Sure. With with the rest of the group, I'll help Squall out. Um, also, check out that weird square thing. Got it. Okay. That, and, and I'm gonna. Uh, so you use five feet of movement to it, get to her. So. Yeah, I'm gonna use on, only thirty. And hmm, I hmm. if you don't I, if you I don't know. make it if you don't make a decision in the next fifteen seconds, All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna make you take the help action and or the dodge oh. action, and then we're gonna move to the next person. We got to keep this moving. All right, um, I'm I'm gonna go to Squall and just tell him to. Uh, get closer to me. So. So you're gonna move to Squall? <clears throat> yeah, because there, there, there's really not much I can do. So that was five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, uh, thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, I pretty much yelled, "Squall, c come back this way!" Uh, while the stone giant is uh, distracted distracted and okay. I'm going to use my action to uh, investigate this body right here that no I, I'm assuming the one I'm highlighting has not been investigated not that you're aware of all right okay so make an so investigation will... make an investigation check for him Fourteen. Thirteen. Um, you grab just very quickly. Two. You you go over. You kind of turn the oh. body over. What? Fourteen, not thirteen. 14. Okay, fourteen. Uh, very quickly, you turn the body over, um, and you begin inspecting it. And it looks, it looks mummified. Like it's been there for a while. I mean, it's 
like desiccated. The skin is pulled back from its face. Um, and you can see that there is a dagger shoved into the belt of this person. Um, unlike the clothing and the actual body itself that looks kind of like ravaged by time, the dagger looks brand new. That's what you find during your investigation. Check. Can I take uh, that, or is that, that just another? Action? That would be that would be an action. Uh, okay, so I, I tell Leah to group up and come up with a plan, and I hopefully convince Squall to come back uh, to at least step away from the stone giant. Okay. Uh, so now it is Squall's turn. <clears throat> I'm gonna disengage. Okay, as your uh, action? Yep. Okay. Um, and then use my movement, right? Is that That's how that works, right? One, yep, yep. two, uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. And did we say pot potions are a bonus action? Health potions are for you. Yeah, if you're using it for yourself as a bonus action. Yes, I will be doing so and okay. consuming a health potion. Quick I question. Am. Yes. Is that Does that go for all potions or just health potions? It goes for health potions. Okay. All righty. So is that your turn? That's going to be the end of my turn, yes. Okay. You can, standing where you're standing right now, Squall, you can yeah. see that square indent. Uh, kind of looks, it almost looks like a like a cutout um, in the side of this column. Very clearly, you're standing in front. An indent cutout in the side of the column? Yeah, it looks like, basically, it looks square. Like a, a like a this a, the border of, of something square is just like there's nothing there. I, I I guess would be like a like an edge. That's what I'm talking. An edge. It looks like an, a square edge, like right into in in the inside of this this column. Does it look like something? I'm um, just to be better understand it. Is it something? that like i would i would i would like a like a grab on like a handle or 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 more of like a like a ledge no there's no handle but it looks like it looks like it's possibly like a door um but there's no handle that you can see just this kind of like edging the square edging around it okay you're not, you're not sure if you have to push it or pull it or but it looks like almost like a little door okay but that's your turn okay yep all right. Uh, next up is Jarena. Well, first, what I'm going to do is, uh, as my bonus action, I'm going to disengage my necrotic shroud. Okay. And then I am going to move um, close to the northeast column. So that's going to be 15 feet, 5, 10, 15. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take out my rope of climbing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to attempt to wrap it, to tie it around, tie one end around that column. Okay. So with the rope of climbing, um, let's see. Yeah, you can actually just tell the rope to fasten itself to an object. That's a bonus action though, which I just used. Um, okay. All right. So are you, so are you animating it or you're just tying it off? I'm just going to tie one end to it physically. And then next turn, I plan on using the bonus action to have the other end tie. Oh, well you have to animate it first, but. But okay, I see what you're saying. All right, no problem. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that's gonna be your action to secure it. So I'm I'm gonna need you to roll me a dexterity check to see how well of a knot you kind of tie into the rope. 
Okay. Um, is it okay if I use one of our group inspiration guys? I don't have sure. a problem. Sure. Right. Oh, good. Okay, with advantage, I got a 14. Okay, not bad. Yeah, so you're able to uh, you tie it around, whip it around, uh, and you can feel the heat radiating off of the, the column still. Um, the rope uh, automatically takes five, uh, uh, five fire damage. Uh, and you need to take uh, track of this uh, because the rope only has 20 hit points. Um, if the rope drops to zero points, it's destroyed. So it currently has taken five fire. Copy that. All right. And I end my turn. Okay, that's a good turn. Uh, alrighty, next up, it is now the Stone Golem's turn. Uh, Stone Golem, uh, you can see is just kind of like swiping at the the sword every time it hits it in the head. Uh, kind of like two kids who are just kind of like messing with each other. Um, and he completely ignores Norman and goes right to Galen. And he is going to take two attacks at Galen. Okay, so the first one, as he raises his boulder-sized fist, is a 28 to hit. Uh, you take 19 bludgeoning damage. Uh, and then he's going to try to attack you again. And that's a 12 to hit, which I don't think hits. So uh, you take the first hit, it's like, Ugh, and you just kind of spit out some blood uh, as it hits you. But you see the second one coming in. And as it does, you just dodge out of the way and <clears throat> it just hits the ground right next to you. You see sand and pebbles just shooting up from the ground around you, uh, showering you. Uh, as it li as it raises its fist back up, getting ready for another attack. Um, but that is its... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. You don't take all of that because Jarena is still focusing on the rain of enfeeblement. So you will actually take... A second. You'll take half of that damage. So you can take 14... Uh, oh, so it was 19, so half of that would be... Oh, okay, math today. Uh, you take nine back. Take nine, da nine hit points back. Still, still was a meaty hit, to say the least. Um, yeah. All right, so that is the Stone Golem's uh, turn. Phoebe, it is now your turn. Rowan, you are after Phoebe. So, I am going to move my max to the right, and I'm going to hold my action until, I don't know who that is, is that Galen or Wall next to the stone column? Uh, that's Kayla. Okay, I'm going to hold my action until he is at least 15 feet away from it. Okay. I'll use the shot. All right, no problem. All righty, so holding your turn. Um, direction, I'm going to do half my movement. Okay, that's fine. I'm in line of shot. Sure, no problem. All righty. Um, so, Rowan. It is now your turn. Sorry, you're after run. Yes, sir. Okay, Rowan's gonna move up to where Phoebe is. It's one, two, next to her. 
No, okay. that's Jarena. I'm sorry, that's Jarena next to that pillar. Yeah. I'm gonna move to the left of her. Um, that's 15 feet, right? Uh, that actually, if you want to move next to her, it'd be, uh, if you're directly next to her, it's 10 feet. Okay. And then I'm gonna take out the portable hole. Um, okay. Quickly unfold it, lay it on the ground in front of me, which is which would be right next to the pillar. Okay. All right. Um, second. Just want to check something real quick. All right. So six feet in diameter. Okay. So you put down, so you, you get next to Phoebe, I mean, I'm sorry, Jarena, and you put down an open the portable hole, which does only take an action. Um, okay. And actually, let's see if I can center that a little better. I want it next to the pillar on, on the other side. Um. Well, the problem is, is it's going to be into in the. Uh, you'd have to actually go back around, and not actually be. Beh you can't be behind her and put it up there, and it would be in in the actual vines of the entanglement. Is that where you want it? No, no, I want it on the other side. Okay, point out what you mean by other side. There's like four or five other sides. Okay, there you go. Perfect. All right. No, so not there. Who did that? That wasn't me. All right. So, so where exactly? Where do you mean by the so, other side? On next to the into the in the square to the left of the pillar. Okay. So, there. There. Okay. I'm I'm putting the hole there. I'm not putting the row in there. Okay. So. That will be. And then as soon as uh, it's down, she's going to uh, run back to where she was, basically. Over, uh, She's going to go over by Sora. Okay. So that's that's as large as the hole is. It's only six feet in diameter. Um, so that's where the hole is. And you said you're going to run back? Yeah, I'm going to go back to Sora. I have um, 30 feet yeah. I think, of yeah. movement. Yep. So I use 10 of it. So I have 20 feet left. Okay. All right. All right. So now you are back next to Sora. Um, and that is your turn. All right. Uh, now it is Sora's turn. Leah, you are after Sora. Okay, I am going to move um, 10 feet. I'm and sorry, I, I forgot to say something. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I I dropped my concentration for the uh, entanglement. Okay. All right, so you are no longer concentrating on that. So we drop that, and then... drop that. All right. And the vines just recede back into the ground. All righty. Uh, Sora, go ahead. You can continue, please. Um, I'm going to roll for inspect on the pillar. Um, uh, that would be investigation. Rather investigation. Yeah, sorry. Can I use a group inspiration? Yes. <laughs> that was worse. Five. Five. Um, 
yeah, you take a look at the pillar and the heat is just really coming off of it. Um, it so much, in fact, you're just kind of like, eh, it looks like there's something that's carved into it. But you can't tell because the heat is just it's so intense. Oh, my God. All right. Well, I'm fire resistant, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the heat's not bothering me so much. Um, okay. That was basically my action and my movement. I mean, you only move 10 feet. You have more movement if you want to take it. No, I know I do, but I want to. Uh, there's something I want to do. So for next round. Okay. So so that's that's your turn. Yeah, that's my turn. All righty, Leah, it is now your turn. So I can see that there are orange dots all over the place. Those are okay. those are braziers that have fires okay. coming out of it right now. Okay. So I just looted the body that's in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look around, not move yet, just look around and see if there's any writing on the wall around me. Um, make a perception check. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Uh, as you begin to kind of look around, um, you notice that there are on these what look like uh, stone, like like these risers that go all the way up. There is actually um, writing or some kind of symbols on them. Uh, and as you kind of look, because you, you rolled so high, uh, you kind of look. This one right here uh, is absolutely in a language you understand. It is Thieves Can't. Um, and it says, loot the fucking bodies. <laughs> okay. So I looted the, the, the two that are next to me. The next one is like right under the stone golem. Mm -hmm. And the other one is under Norman. Um. Well, yeah, actually, no, you, you've looted, you've looted this, uh, the one that you're right next to, um, yeah. and the one that Squall is next to. Those are the two that you've looted so far. Yeah. So, um, the one that I looted that's next to Squall had the pouch of coins or pouch of something. Um, it, it had two healing potions in it. Oh, that was it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so where Squall is, there's a little niche in the pillar. Yes. Does it look like something you could stick your hand in? You're not sure. You'd have to get closer. Okay. I'd like to do that then. Okay. Uh, so you get closer to the pillar. Um, and yeah, it looks like, it looks like a small like door. Um, but you don't see a handle uh, or anything like that. It's just it just looks like some kind of door and it's kind of carved out. Um, you're not sure what you need to do with it. I'm going to ask can, you can, to investigate it. And you can also feel the heat coming off. It's hot? Yeah. Okay, then. Um... Yeah, I'm going to ask Lucy to go investigate it. Okay. Um, Lucy goes over. Uh, roll an investigation check for Lucy. So you're just going to roll a d20 and add Lucy's intelligence modifier. Uh, Let's see. I rolled the 16, but her modifier is. Minus two. Her intelligence. Yeah. Um, so 14. 14? Actually, it's, st it's still not bad. Um, so Lucy jumps on the pillar um, and immediately takes four fire damage. Um, 
And okay, yeah, and you she looks really, really hurt. Um and as she kind of is like is like holding there, you watch as she takes her hand and pushes it into pushes the uh the 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 what looks like a door and it just pushes inward and then falls and there is now some kind of hole in the side of this uh this pillar can i investigate what's in it you've already you've already used your uh, action uh to investigate both the pillar and uh the other the other writing and stuff so you'd have to wait for your next turn I can't use a bonus action. Not for that. No, it w- it's an action to to investigate. Okay. Can I yell out to the rest of the group? Hey guys, there's a a little chamber over here. Well, at least a squall anyway. <laughs> I mean, you can call out. Yeah. All right. That happened okay. in front of me, right? For the yeah, of- that happened in front of you. So it, you saw you saw exactly yeah. what happened. Right. Okay. Alrighty, uh, so that is your turn, Leah. Uh, it is now Norman's turn. Uh, Norman just runs right back up onto the stone golem and continues to tink, 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 just poke this stone golem in the head with the sword. He's using the help action, and again, anyone that does that takes an attack on the stone golem during this time. While he is distracted, we'll get advantage on the attack. Um, alrighty, Galen, it is now your turn. You have this body down in front of you that you just saw has a dagger shoved in its belt. Um, you were watching Norman just kind of poke the stone golem in the head with the sword. Uh, not really doing much damage, but it, the stone golem's like... <clears throat> Um, while that's happening, definitely seems a little distracted. Uh, what would you like to do? And I'm assuming I heard Leah shout, like, there's something in the pillars. Mm-hmm. So. Hmm. 15 feet, we could do some damage. Uh, is, so grabbing the knife, even though I can see it, would that, that takes an action, right? That that would be an action because you are actively trying to pull it out of the belt and yeah, that's an that would be an action. Does patient defense work if I'm also running, or do I have to stay uh, like where I am? Uh, that's a good question. Let's uh, let's take a look. All right. Uh, what does patient defense say? Because those are your skills that you should know, or at least have in front of you, ready to go. Okay, so patient defense, uh, it just says I can spend a key point to to use the dodge action as a bonus action. So I guess disengage doesn't really... Actually, step of the wind, uh, but that's an action. What's an action? So I'm looking at Step of the Wind, uh, mm-hmm. and it says uh, you can take one key point uh, to take no, it. No, Step of the Wind, that's, that's a bonus action. That's not that's Okay, not a, so Disengage can be a bonus. Okay. Step of the Wind oh, okay. is a bonus action. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think I see, so I'm sure I see Phoebe uh, gearing up to, to shoot. And what I'm assuming is probably the explosive arrows. So I'm just going to quickly grab the knife and use Step of the Wind as a bonus action disengage and run the opposite direction because I am distracting this thing. That is my job. Okay. Alrighty. So, yeah, you take your Step of the Wind. Um, Uh, I take the dagger as an action. Yeah, that's, that's your action. You disengage using Step of the Wind, and you run away. Uh, definitely, the Stone Golem sees distracted, and by the time he sees you and takes a swipe at you, it's too late. 
Um, and you now have this dagger in your hand. As you grab, will... as you grab the dagger, you immediately know that it's magical. Like, for some weird reason, like just the thought just pops into your head. Oh, this is a magical dagger. And essentially, for your purposes, it is a dagger plus one. All right. Um, so that is your turn, Galen. Squall. Phoebe's bonus action or reaction. Attack of opportunity. You're, okay, yeah. Or abs- my, my held action, yeah. Okay, yeah, go for it. So I'm going to do an arcane shot, bursting arrow. All right, so roll for your attack. Does she get um advantage? Mm-hmm, because she's the first attack uh, while... Norman is helping. Um, that's awesome because I rolled a nat nineteen. Um, with the hit dice plus nine, that is twenty eight. I think that definitely hits. <laughs> so roll, roll your regular attack damage. Well, actually, so- your re- your regular attack damage. Would not do. Hmm, oh wait a minute. So, but you're actually making the arrow magical in this case. So yeah, no. Yeah. Roll. Yeah, roll your attack damage. Yeah. Um, that's ten regular damage. Okay. And for the force damage, uh, eight damage. So total eighteen damage altogether. Nice. Um. So, as the arrow begins to glow, as you charge it with this arcane energy, and it just goes flying, uh, the arrow now, uh, magical, it takes the full effect of the arrow's damage, as well as the force damage. Um, and you see chunks just got... Uh, Norman uh, standing next to it uh, does take uh, eight damage. Uh, and you see like like a dent uh, just kind of appear from, from the force damage itself. How much damage was that again? Uh, it was 18, 18 altogether. But Norman only took the the force damage, which was eight. All righty. And you watch Norman's head turn to you. uh, And then it goes. Um, All right. I, I briefly go, sorry, Norman. And then it goes back to poking him in the head. Um, all right, Squall, it is now your turn. Is this hole still in front of me? Did we... Did yes, we... it is. Okay, so then I guess I'm gonna... I'd like to investigate it? Um, well, you look inside, and there's something inside of it. You can just see there is something in there. Sure, what... No, nothing bad can happen for me reaching in for it. Let's go. All right, uh, I need you to roll me a d4, please. <laughs> okay. Um one. One. Okay. Uh as you reach in uh and you yank out whatever this is, there is this long coiled rope. Uh it is silver. Mm-hmm. Um and it is glowing slightly, and the minute you grab it, you realize Oh, this is a rope of entanglement. Just, just like the thought, no. the thought just pops into your head and you're like, oh, um, and for your purposes, um, you can you can actually add that to your inventory. Uh, Galen, you can actually add that dagger to your inventory. Also, um, any if there is an item that appears that says it needs to be attuned in this instance, you are automatically attuned to it. 
Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. So automatically attuned. Uh, okay. Uh, so reaching in would be my action. That's your action, yeah. But so you now bonus, you now know what it is. Okay, as a bonus action, I'm gonna manifest my echo. Alrighty. Uh, All right, where where at? Um, uh, five three squares uh, south of my position. Okay, so it can only be fifteen. So right there. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to use some movement. <laughs> Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then I'm going to... I guess I can also move my echo, because that's free. Uh, okay, yeah, that's by the end of my turn. All right. All righty. Um, Jarena, it is now your turn. Okie dokie. I am going to undo the knot <laughs> from the rope. Okay. Uh, before and... that before that happens, yes. the rope takes one fire damage. Got it. Okay. Alright, so you undo the rope. Yep. That's my action, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then as a bonus action, I'm going to drink a potion of healing. All right. You still have movement if you want to use it. For right now, I'm going to stay where I am. All righty. Sounds good. All right. Next up is the stone golem's turn. Uh is going to see if its slow spell is recharged. It is recharged. Um, it is going to turn and it's going to slam its fists together and you watch this blue energy, the, the pulse of blue energy from its face going down its arms, shoots forward towards Galen and Leah. Also, and also... Lucy. Um, so I'm going to need uh, the three of you to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. So, Leah, what'd you get? Twelve. Twelve. Um, Galen, what did you get? I think he died. No. What did you get? You got a one? Oh. And what did Lucy get? <laughs> I didn't know Lucy had a roll. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. So it's just a D20 and her wisdom modifier. Lucy rolled a one. Okay, so as this wave of blue energy uh, just washes over the three of you, you all feel very slow. And for, for all purposes, you are all slowed, which means your speed is halved. You cannot use reactions. You cannot make more than one attack on your turn. In addition, you can only take an action or a bonus action, not both. And this effect lasts for one minute, but at the end of each of your turns, you can roll to see if you can shake off the effect. How long is one minute again? How many turns? Ten 10 rounds. Okay. So let's uh, let's mark you guys as slowed there. So 
We'll use the blue ring for the blue energy. Um, and... All right, so then it's going to run up and it is going to actually no, that that was its action. Let me just double check real quick. Yeah. All right. That's uh, that's all I can do in this time. Um, but it just runs up on you preparing for another attack. Um, Alrighty, so next up is Phoebe. Rowan, you are after Phoebe. Sharina's had her hand up for like 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I just wanted to uh, let you know, DM, you have a DM inspiration from Grant, and you now have an Ocelotus DM inspiration for saving throughs. We have two group inspirations. Rowan, you have one, and Squall, you have one as well. Mm hmm Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Remember, you guys should be writing that down too, so, uh, so you know, because she's not she's not gonna remind you every turn. So you, you want to remember if you have one, make sure to use yep. them. I also wanted to remind you that you had them too. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um. So that is so now it's Phoebe's turn. Rowan, you're after Phoebe. So, I already used up both of my arcane shots. Until I have a short rest, I cannot use... I'm virtually useless. So, <laughs> I am going to hold my action. Hold your action. Okie doke. What's your action going to be? What are you holding? Well, I'll try to do what I can. And I'll just keep firing arrows. Okay. So. Alrighty. Okay. So, Rowan, it is now your turn. Sorry, you're after Rowan. Rowan is going to investigate the pillar she's that is in front of her. Uh, you have to move up to it. Yes, I would like to do that. I'm sorry, okay. I mixed myself up with Jarena. <laughs> no problem. Um, all right, so you're in front of the pillar. Uh, make an investigation check for me. Actually, no. You do, at this point, seeing everything that's been going on, you really don't have to. You can see a similar, actually, like carved out, like small door, uh, but there's no handle. She picks up her staff and uses the base of it to push on that indention. Okay. Uh, she push, You push on it and it falls. Did you see anything? Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's a pile of, there's something inside of it. Um, can she take it out? Uh, knocking that out? was your action. Can she use a bonus action to take it out? <laughs> it would be an action to do that, but you do have a bonus action. It is now open um, and you still have some movement. You only took five feet of movement. Well, I'm not gonna move away without taking the thing out. <laughs> so okay. I'll just stay there, but I'll keep an eye on where the golems are at. Okay, not a problem. All right, Sora, it is now your turn. Alrighty. I'm going to cast Magic Missile at uh, the Golem's head. Okay, go for it. Oh, wait, which Golem? The stone one. Okay. Five. Okay. Okay. Two. Two. All right, so 11 total damage as the darts 
just shoot as you're pulling the arcane energy from your tome, which has this like slight, like slimy glaze to it. It's a little, little icky. Um, the arcane energy is pulled from it and these darts go shooting and you see more cracks beginning to form. You see more stone fall, you know, flying away from the impact points. Um, still up. He definitely took the damage, but he's still up. Seems like, you know, still in fairly hardy condition. What would you like to do? You still have movement and a bonus action. Um, I am going to also look for an indentation or a hole. Well, you just saw Rowan knock that out. And that oh, was that was the only uh, one. I just realized she's right next to me. Yeah. All right. Um, hmm. Teamwork. Give me a second. Five. Um, the one behind Jarena is has that one been inspected? You don't know. All right. I'm looking. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, you, at this point, yeah, since now you are you know what to look for, you do see what looks like an indentation uh, on this as well. But unfortunately, you've already used your action to try and do anything, so you wouldn't be able to actually uh, do anything, but you do see one. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. So that is Sara's turn. Leah, it is now your turn. So... Again, while you're slowed, uh, your movement is halved. You can only take an action or a bonus action. You can't do both. What would you like to do? You said I could do a wisdom saving throw on my turn. It would be at the end of your turn. So you'd have to do whatever you're going to do first. And then when you were done, you can make that roll. So if my movement is halved, that's only 15 feet? Mm-hmm. I want to get on the other side of the pillar and be out of direct line of fire, but I want to yell to Galen. Um, actually, never mind. I'll just move. So you're just going to move yourself? Yeah, I'm going to hold an action until I can uh, do some damage to the golem. So I'm going to hold a crossbow bolt. Okay. See if I can uh, shoot a blue eye. So yeah, so you begin to everybody who's watching you can see you just moving really slowly. Uh and as you as you turn around the other side, you're just like very slowly loading your crossbow bolt, pulling it back, getting ready for uh your next for for the attack. Um I will actually say you're holding your action. Okay. Um, so now it's the end of your turn. You can make uh, try to shake the slow effect. Uh, so wisdom saving throw. I rolled a nat one. Okay. Yeah, you are still under the slow effect. Uh, you can roll one. I don't for, like these digital dice. You can roll one for Lucy if you want. As Lucy didn't take her turn, so it's at the end. Uh, Lucy rolled the 10. And Lucy is still under the slow effect. Wait, which which ones are her saving throw? Well, for her, it would just be a d20 plus her, whatever her wisdom modifier is. Oh, okay. She doesn't have a modifier. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Alrighty. So that is that was your turn, Leah. All right, it is now Norman's turn. Norman <laughs> runs right up to Stone Golem, tink, 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 and continues to use the help action by poking the Stone Golem in the head with his very large sword. Um, and the Golem's like, <laughs> uh, so whoever attacks the Stone Golem next will have advantage. 
on the attack. Uh, all right, Galen, it is now your turn. You are also slowed, currently. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, what would you like to do? Um. So I plan on going, and I'm going to show it on the thing uh, this way. And as I'm past it, uh, I'm still like in his. Um, like if I if I do this, I'm still. Yeah, you, would, you would still. Yeah, you would still be in his melee range. Okay, so. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move there. As I'm passing, I'd like to use my dagger, my brand new dagger, and mm -hmm. see if it does any damage to him. As okay. I'm like passing through, I'd like to do like a side by slice. Sure. Uh, roll to attack. With advantage, or do do I have like disadvantage to attack? You you have advantage because Norman is giving you the help action. Uh, by poking it in the head. So it's a, with advantage. Twenty-six. Uh that def hit. that definitely hits. Sorry, it's been a sec. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. Yeah, you hit uh, the midsection of of the stone golem, and you watch as like like one of the cracks that Sora's magic missiles made. The dagger actually goes into the crack, and you watch as it just continues to go further in, and a piece of the stone just falls away as it takes the full damage. All right. Uh, I believe um, that's I believe that's your whole turn. Because you, um, you are slow. Hmm. Nah, I'm gonna I'm not gonna risk the uh, attack of opportunity because unless well you you own well you only had twenty feet of movement because you only have because you're slow. Yeah, but I can I still have one last key point. I'm debating if I should. No, you don't. The, uh, you you can't use it right now because you are yeah. slowed. You only oh, take right, because you you can only take an action or a bonus action, not both, and you already took your action to attack. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Well, there's a little bit of hope in his eyes of okay. finally actually doing damage for once. Okay. Um, oh, it wait. is. What's what what what? I got to do the saving throw. Oh uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, make a wisdom saving throw. Eighteen. 18. Um, after you finish your attack and you move to you move to that section, you make the attack. Um, you're you feel like you're able to shake off the effect, and you are no longer slow. It was that small glimmer of hope of finally doing damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it probably did it. All righty, uh, Squall. It is now your turn, Jarena. You're after Squall. Um, with the rope in hand, um, okay, so what we're going to do here is going to be this five, ten, fifteen, five. 30. I'm going to use the the rope uh, that I am automatically attuned to. Okay. Uh, to try to restrain the golem. Okay. Um so you speak the command word. What what is the command word? Uh strength. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, very simple and not to the very, point. Yeah, not a creative uh, uh, warrior here. Just doing what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, so um, as you uh, you would actually... Hold on a second. I just want to make sure... 
Okay, yeah. So I have to make a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Um, so that is going to be... Should be interesting. It just makes it with a 15. <laughs> uh, so the um, rope, the rope shoots forward from your hand and tries to, and it just kind of like wiggles, mm -hmm. and the rope falls to the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am going to use as a bonus action my second wind. Okay. To heal and, myself. And we'll just say for the, for the sake of you knowing where it is, this little blue X right here is where the rope has fallen. Okay. Or Okay. And that's my turn. Alrighty. Um, I'm thinking on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Jarena, it is now your turn. Hate that. Okay. Um, since Sora's right next to me, did I see her find that hole in that column? Uh, yeah, you saw her just kind of looking, and if you move over to where she is, uh, you, you should have no problem seeing it. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I would like to try to stick my hand in it. Well, it's, it's still, there is still like a door there, like part of the column still there. Oh, um, she didn't knock it. She didn't knock it open. Oh, got it. Then I want to try to, uh, knock it with the end of my staff. All right. You knock it with the end of your staff and it, it falls over. That is your action. Okay. And as my bonus action, I am going to do nothing. And I'm going to stay right there. <laughs> okay. All right. It is now the Stone Golem's turn. He's going to attempt to recharge his slow attack. Uh, that is a failure. He does not get it back. So, he decides he's going to punch somebody. Um, hey, those... Discord crashed for uh, Tarius. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, so we'll wait for him to get back because that's that's what the Stone Golem is going to hit. Um. <laughs> It's the closest Poor one. He's, he's standing right there. Poor Galen. There he is. He's back. Hey, he's back. I was watching a uh, part of it. Yeah, I'm getting attacked, aren't I? Yeah, you're you're right next to him. Um, yeah, I know. This this is my job. I am to be <laughs> the distraction while okay. everyone. I like the rodeo clown. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it is going to swing at you with his boulder fist. The first one is a 21 to hit. That is just my AC. All right. Uh, and you take, with that hit, 22 bludgeoning damage. I'm down. Right. With the I hit. Had 16, because I had 16 hit points left. All right. With that hit, you watch as a spell spurt of blood uh, leaves Galen's mouth and he falls to the ground unconscious. Wait, doesn't the golem do half damage because of my ray of enfeeblement? You are correct. So you would only take 11 damage. We rewind that. Almost down. All right. It's now going to swing at you with its other fist. That is a 12 to hit, which misses you. Thank you, Jer Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of that. I appreciate that. All good, all good. 
Um, so yeah, you see just blood pouring from uh, Galen's mouth, and he's just like uh, holding what's possibly a couple of broken ribs from these massive swings uh, and hits from from the stone golem. Uh, it is now Phoebe's turn. Rowan, you are after Phoebe. So I am. Hmm. My arrows aren't going to do anything. So what do you want to do? I virtually a, can't do anything. There's a column that nobody looked at yet. Uh, OK, I'll go look at the column. It's uh, it's this one, correct? Mm hmm. OK, so I'll go over there and I will check it. All right. After seeing everybody looking at columns, you are now kind of like, what the hell is everybody looking at? You just kind of look and you can see what looks like an indent kind of door with no handle on the side of the column. And you can feel the heat coming off. So that was your movement. What do you want to do? So. Hmm. You said there's a handle in a door, right? There is no handle. It just looks like a little door. Okay. I don't know if taking out one of my battle axes would be an action. Uh, well, what do you, what do you want like, to do? Well, what do you want I to do? I would like to I would like to try and pry the door open. With the axe? Yes. Okay, you use the axe and as you kind of put it into the the like the little crevice on the side, um you feel it give very easily. And it falls, it falls out uh, towards you. That's your action to open it up. All right. All right. Okie dokie. Um, all right. That's uh, your turn. Phoebe, Rowan, it is now your turn. Sora, you are up after Rowan. I take the thing out of the crevice. Okie dokie. Oh, you take the thing out of the crevice. Roll me a D4, please. Survey says... Three. Three. You stick your hand inside and you immediately feel like you grab something. And as you grab it, you pull it out. You keep pulling it out. And you keep pulling it out until you have this long golden staff in your hands. And it definitely doesn't look like it should have fit in that small hole. The, the, the column is not that long around. And as you hold it, you immediately know that this is a staff of healing. And it currently has three charges. Cool. Okay, so you can add that to your inventory, um, but it will say that you have ten charges. Currently, this one only has three. Is that something that can be recharged at some point? Possibly. Okay. All right. So you now have that. That was your that was your action to pull that out. Let's see. Um, gonna use my movement, and I'm just looking at the map. I want to get. On to the other, I want to be able to, let's see, I have 30. So one, two, three, six. Can I get right in front of Leah? Uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, easy enough. Okay. All right. So there you are right in front of Leah. I don't see myself moving on the map, so I'm just going to ask, can I, can you make sure I'm just, I have the, the pillar to my right and Leah in front of me? Um, the, the pillar Is that to where I, Yeah. The pill, like, I want to be, I want that pillar between me and that stone column. 
<clears throat> um. All right. Wait. Oh, so you would be the C. So that would be five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay. Yeah. You can do that. Not a problem. So you're right there. Thank you. You got it. All righty. Sora, it is now your turn. Leah, you are after Sora. All righty. I am going to use my action to reach into the hole. Okay. Uh, roll a d20. Uh, roll, uh, roll a d4. Sorry. Not d4. d4 for me. Let there be glory. <clears throat> A one. A we one. do have a group inspiration. Well, no. Um, you roll the one. Uh, you pull your put your hand inside. Um, and as you pull it out, there is a very simple leather quiver with five arrows that are slightly glowing in. Ha ha. Um. I holler to Phoebe, Phoebe, I think these are for you. Okay. Anything else you're doing or? I am going to, sorry, yeah, I've got a lot of tabs up. Um, oh. <clears throat> Come on. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna no. It's, I'm, I'm, I lost uh, the map. Um, I'm gonna. Um, if you could move me. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Four squares over. No, three squares over to the right. Okay. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Right there. Uh, the stream hasn't caught up. No, um, I'm I'm behind Jarena, right? You you were, yeah. Yeah. Fifteen. Um, uh, five, ten, fifteen. By the body. Oh, okay. Five, ten. That's only ten. So you're right by the body. And I'm going to stay there. Okay, so you've got the the small quiver with the arrows. You've made your way over to the body. That is your turn, Leah. It is now your turn. You are you and Lucy are still slow. So all the pillars have been checked, even the one by the big hole. Um, you're as far as you know. Uh, it looks like at this point. Probably Phoebe's the only one that hasn't finished doing her thing. Is it open? Mm, no, it's not. Oh, actually, yeah, it is open. Okay. Um, she looks like she's getting ready to stick her hand in, but it's, it's open. Is there anything else around that I could see that looks useful? You said there's heat coming out of the columns. Mm -hmm. But does it look like there's any other place in the arena where he could be generated from? Like in these uh, gated openings on the sides? Well, you well, as far as the heat from the. Uh, the heat from the columns, you do recall that they only began to heat up once the braziers got lit. Um, OK, so it's very easy to kind of like make a correlation that that's probably why these columns are heating up. Um, so would that mean there's a fire pit underneath the arena? You're not sure. Is, is there anything around that indicates there might be? Make, I will say make a perception check. Thirteen plus six, nineteen. Okay. Um, currently, you see a couple of things. The first thing that seems to be very interesting is you see Leopold watching everything. 
but he's currently waving his hands in the air and you and there's energy like building up around his hands and it it's just seems consistent and he looks like he's muttering under his breath this whole time um that's the first thing you notice the second thing you notice is that there are other words um that's the wrong thing there are other words that seem to be uh on these uh risers on the side similar to what you saw in the thieves can't um but they definitely don't look like languages you understand especially you'd have to get closer to, to you know see exactly what they look like but from this distance you really can't understand what they're saying okay how far away is leopold from me um he's about maybe like he's 30 feet away and 80 feet up All right, just give me one second here. I'm, I'm checking my inventory. Okay. What's a pitten? Oh, that's to help you climb. Basically, kind of, it's a metal, a metal rod with a hole at the end of it. So for as part of your climbing gear. I can't find the sling staff that I had that goes with the ball bearings. Uh, it should just be a sling. It should just say sling. It should be part of your weapons. Okay. Well, I can't find it. Um... Well, ball bearings, ball oh. bearings are not ammo. So you might not necessarily actually have a sling. I have something at the bottom that says unidentified item. Okay. I don't know what that is. Uh, no, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> unidentified item. That sounds a little scary to me. Um, let me. All right. So just try and figure out something else. I will take a look and see if. Uh, see if I can figure out what that is. Um, what, what else would do you think you'd like to do? I want to take a shot at Leopold. I don't want to maim or hurt him. I want to kind of beat him off the top of the head, maybe with one of my daggers. So that he stops casting. Okay. Um, all right. So your daggers only have a range maximum of 60 feet. So uh, I would have to use the short bow. Probably a short bow, yeah. And you do not have a sling in your pack. Okay. I think I think your starting equipment was the rapier, dagger, and short bow. Okay. Um, can I do that then? Take a shot at him with my short bow, but not to kill him? Just to get him to stop casting, maybe whiz past his head? Sure. You can give it a shot. So roll for attack. <laughs> 23 <laughs> that that definitely hits I don't want to do any damage I just want to get his attention to you, stop have, you, you, you have to roll damage that's that's how you actually get him to stop casting okay Five. Oh, five. five plus five is ten. Ten. Okay. Uh, so ten damage. All right. Uh, he's gonna roll with some saving throw. He's a war caster, so he has advantage. Okay. Uh, you shoot. Um, and the arrow goes sailing. Uh, and you watch as it just kind of clips him in the shoulder. He goes ah. Uh, and he, it looks like he stops for a moment and then 
just continues. You watch as the fires just very briefly go down. And then as he continues, just go back up to where they were. And then he kind of looks at you as he's casting and he goes. Um, doesn't seem upset. Um, but OK, so that is your action. Uh, you do have 15 feet of movement if you want to take it. I'm just going to stay where I am, but I want to do that wisdom saving throw because I don't like being stuck. OK, so roll. Yeah, roll your that. It's the end of your turn. So wisdom saving throw. Fifteen. Fifteen. You are unfortunately still slowed. Uh, roll one for Lucy. Lucy rolled another ten. Right. You are both still under the slow effect, unfortunately. All righty. Top of the round. Uh, Norman's going to continue to use the help action. By poking him in the head with the sword. Tink, 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 tink. Next attack on uh, the Stone Golem has advantage. Uh, Galen, it's now your turn. I am going to do uh, one dagger attack, and then I'm going to attack his leg. See if uh, one of his legs, see if it weakens it. Okay, so oh, just damage. just again, just a reminder, if you are trying to make some kind of effect that you do not have a skill for, that is going to be a targeted attack and it will always be at disadvantage. But it, he's a large he's essentially a large creature or a large enemy. It's still it's still a focused attack rather okay, than you so just trying to hit him. There's so there's a, there's a difference. Of- so what if I just attack his leg and not expecting yeah, you, something? You have, you have, well, but you just said you're trying to weaken him. That's, that's, yeah. the, dif- that's the difference. Okay. So what if I just attack his leg and don't yeah, you're, you're just attacking the leg. Yeah. Not a problem. Okay. I'll do that in, instead. Okay. Words have meanings. Twenty-six again. That definitely hits. Seven damage. Seven damage. You watch as again one of the cracks made from Sora's uh, magic missile um, allows you to get into uh, a certain area, and you just stab into that area, and a chunk of rock falls off of the leg. Um, still standing, but took all of that damage. Okay. Um, I'm going to use, uh, this is going to be my last key point, uh-huh. uh, but I, this is just another sake of, for, of curiosity for him. Uh, he's going to attack that part of the leg again, but with um, the drunken technique. So he's going to use uh, flurry blows and then oh. run away. Okay. So Flurry of Blows, that's unarmed. Those are two unarmed strikes. Go for it. Uh, hold on. One second. Well, those uh, are... 23. Yeah, well, those are unarmed strikes. So yeah. as, as, you, yeah, as you punch and hit in that area... Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem to have any effect whatsoever. Even though there's damage? Even though there's damage to there, doesn't seem to have any effect. Okay. So, because now with my drunken technique, that activates my uh, dodge action. And... Well, no, you can disengage. Oh, yeah, disengage. That's what yeah. I meant to say. Yeah. So, you can definitely move away from him without him taking an attack of opportunity. Okay, and then I tell Jarena, I need healing, please. I think I'm gonna die next hit. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that is your turn. Squall, it is now your turn. Jarena, you're after Squall. Okay. I 
a little a little frustrated with this situation. Run up to the golem. Okay. It always goes well. Uh, five, ten. Can can I stand like in the square where the body is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to cast levitate on the fucking golem. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um. I think I just have to be touching it. Like I just have to touch it, right? Well, let's I'm pretty see. Sure. Pretty just sure double, that's. Yeah, let's just double check that. Um, uh, an unwilling yeah. creature. That succeed on a Constitution saving throw is unaffected. So you, so, okay, so it has to be a Constitution. You have to. You have to roll a Constitution saving throw, right? Right. Right. Okay. Uh, it doesn't give me a DC. So what would that? How would that um. Work? Whatever your DC is, ah, you should have a DC uh, for, for some of the things you do. Uh, I, uh, where, what page would that be on there? Um, that should be, well, you don't have a spell list, but it should be under spells. Uh, Constitution 13? Hit DC, yeah. yeah, yeah, hit DC. That's it. Yeah. All right. So it's Constitution thirteen. Let's see. <laughs> he has a plus five to his Constitution, but only rolls an eleven. So <laughs> the levitate, <He's> levitate. <laughs> the levitate does take effect. Um, okay. <laughs> this is interesting. Okay, so now he should be levitated off the ground, yes? Uh, you can, let's see. Do, do, do. Yeah, he rises up off of the ground 20 feet. Um, Interesting. He is going to take an attack of opportunity on you as he is leaving <laughs> your the me your melee range, because you're in melee range with him. Um, is, that, is he not at some sort of disadvantage to some degree <laughs> and is it, it i should um, be okay let's see <laughs> doesn't he still have enfeeblement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so but no he does not get a disadvantage because he's literally like rising and as he's rising he's getting out of uh melee range with you so he is going to try and punch you um so let's see. This should be very interesting. So the first hit to you, it's a 29 to hit. Fuck me. <laughs> yeah, um, of course it hits. Um, and that's going to be. All right. So that's 10. You only take five damage. Okay. Uh, rather than the full 10. Um, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. This is to concentrate on your levitation spell. Make sure you don't drop it. You just have to get a 10 or higher. 15. All right, yeah, no problem. You're still concentrating. But he takes another swing. Because he has a multi-attack. And that's a 30 to hit. Um, and you take from that... The full damage is 17. You would only take 8 damage because of the Ray of Enfeeblement. And I need uh -huh. you to make another Wisdom Saving Throw. I'm going to use my inspiration. <laughs> Go for it. This is the time. Oh, my God. Nine. Nine. With that second hit, you lose concentration on the levitate and he falls to the ground uh back on his feet unfortunately it was good it was a good it was a really good idea unfortunately he had a reaction to do that so sorry if you were out of uh... melee range when you did it it might have it might have might not have gone down that way if I hadn't disengaged, maybe. 
because he would have taken a reaction against me. Ugh. All right. You, you live and learn. This is this is why you're in the pit of death. I still have play here. I am going to use my ax action sur surge. Okay. Because I get the f way. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that action surge to disengage. Sure. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. That's how I'd have to do it. Five. I went over two, 10, 15, five, 10, 15, 20. Okay. And that's the end of my turn. All right. All right. So. Uh, that's your turn. Uh, Jarena is now your turn. Okay. Uh, as Galen comes up to me, I yell out, go to Leah, and then I move 10 feet, uh, to the other body. And to Sora, I yell, go to Phoebe with the quill, and I want to investigate the body. Okay. Uh, roll an uh, investigation check. Can I use a group inspiration? Group? Yes. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Much better. 19. 19. All right. Uh, yeah, you turn this body over. And as you do, you can see that the whole body um, was on top of something. And you would have missed it if it wasn't for your investigation check because it seems to be mostly covered by sand. And as you kind of start dusting away the sand, you see this green longbow um, with a silver string on it. Um, and it looks, even though it was under the sand and the body looks desiccated and has been here for some time, it looks, it looks new, it looks brand new. You grab okay. it. You grab it. Y yep. Um. And hold on a second. Actually, no. You wouldn't be able to grab it yet. So, because you use your your action for investigation. So, uh, gotcha. but you but you see it. It's there. Um, and you also see like a little quiver on the belt, and but all, but all of the arrows inside of it seem to be broken. Got it. All right. Uh, so that is that is your action. That was some of your movement. Um, I am going to stay where I am and end my turn. Okay. No bonus action. Uh, actually, uh, no, I don't really have one right now. All righty. Uh, it is now the stone golem's turn. Uh, it is going to attempt to recharge its slow spell. And it does not. So it is now. Hmm. Uh, still swiping the sword away from his head. Um, it's going to. Uh, yeah, it's going to run over here and it is going to take two attacks, one on Leah. And one on Squall's Echo. So the first attack will be to Leah. Oh, wow. That was a journey. That was almost a natural 20. Uh, but it swings at you for 12, which I don't think hits you, right? Okay. No, it doesn't hit us. Okay. So you just kind of dodge. And as you do, the, the stone... Uh, the stone fist slams into the side of the column. You watch the column shake slightly. Uh, and then it's going to take an, its other swing at Squall's Echo. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Yep. All right. Your Echo vanishes. 
All right. And that is its turn. Uh, Phoebe, it is now your turn. Rowan, you're after Phoebe. What you doing, Phoebe? Um, I'm still reaching inside, right? Or you were getting, yeah, you knocked it over. If you want to reach in and grab it, you can actually, it is now your action. You can use your action to go in and grab whatever is inside. All right, I'm going to use my action to grab whatever's inside, and I'm going to try and get away from that. Okay. After that. <laughs> All right, so you reach in, and you feel something. You begin to pull it out, and as you pull it out, keep pulling you keep pulling and then it's finally out and free and you're holding some really weird looking rod like it's probably about seven or eight inches long this beautiful like metal uh with gold highlights kind of like rod but at the end of it there are these three rubbery tendrils like tentacles at the end of it. And as soon as you grab it, you automatically know in your head, this is a tentacle rod. So you can add tentacle rod to your inventory. Um, it is an item that needs to be attuned. You feel like you're automatically attuned to it. So that was your action. Now, what are you going to do? I am going to use my full, um, my full movement to try and get to Sora. Okay, you can do that. Okay. Alrighty. So that's your turn. All right, Rowan, it is now your turn. Does Rowan know if her staff of healing will remove the slow spell from Leah? Uh, did you put it in your inventory? Because you can read what exactly what it does and you would know those things. Not yet. You should have done that before. I said add it to your inventory. That's why I said add it to your inventory. All right, well, I'm going to whack Leah with the, the healing. Uh, thing anyway. You're gonna whack her with the the healing staff. Um, heal. Okay. <laughs> well, you gotta know what it does first, because if you just whack her with it, you, I'm gonna ask you to roll for attack. Oh no, I don't want to attack her. <laughs> add it to your inventory. How about? <laughs> add how, about it to, I... how about you add it to your inventory, see what it does, and then you can figure out what to do with it. All right, I'm just gonna grab her and, and pull and take her with me as I go to the other side of the pillar where okay. the body is. Okay. So that's, you're going to be pulling her at half speed. Um, cause you're pulling somebody. Oh yeah. Yes. Um, all right. So you pull her, um, and it is going to take an attack of opportunity on Leah as she moves out of its melee range. I'm sorry, Leah. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to help. Are you going to draw uh, a picture of this when help. I'm dead? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, does an 18 hit you, Leah? Yes? Okay. Uh, so you take the first swing. She was at full health. Hold on. I was trying to help. You take eight damage. That's halved, because thankfully it's still enfeebled. And then it swings at you again. And that's 22 to hit. Um, and you will take... Uh, you will take 9 damage, which is halved from the full damage. But you are now pulled away from it. Uh, what else would you like to do, Ron? Is that 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 kill was myself? just that, that was just I'd, movement. I'd like to kill myself now. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't help me anymore. Is 
at a free action, I mean. <laughs> I, I would like to roll for shame. Um, free, a- free action for crying? Yeah. Is, there, is there a free action to there, cry? There's always a free action to cry. Uh, you still do um, have an action, Rowan. Hold on a sec. All right. Sora, just remember you are up after Rowan. Mm hmm. Alrighty. I'll cast Cure Wounds on Leah. Okay, that'll take off one charge. Uh, so you, you get to roll that for her. Seven plus four okay. is 11? Yep. Yeah. So Leah, you get 11 hit points back. And an apology. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Um, if there isn't anything else wrong? Nope. Rowan's good. Okay. Sarah, you're up. Leah, you're after Sarah. Okay. I am going to... Hmm. I'm going to cast Magic Missile at the golem. Okay. How many more spell slots do you have of that? You you did cast. I them. have one. Uh, I have one. Have one left. Okay. I kept track. Don't worry. Okay, I'm just making sure. We're, you know, first time first time playing wizard. I'm just trying to help. It's not my first time playing wizard. <laughs> Second time. <laughs> Two. Two. Okay. Two. Two. And five. Five. Okay, so nine damage altogether. Uh, each hit making more and more cracks. Um, damn, you can see rocks just falling away from it. Um, there's a lot of pieces missing from this golem. It is looking very, it's looking hurt. Um, that was at the head? Um, it was around the neck and head area. Okay. All right. Uh, you have movement if you'd like to take it. Okay. Yeah, I took it. All right. Sora, make a quick perception check for me, please. Two. Two. Okay. Uh, you quickly, you, you look around, you see there's like writing on, on the, the riser behind you, but you just don't pay attention because there's so much going on. Um, all right, uh, Leah, you are up. So, um, Galen is too far away and there's a golem in the way for me to give him a healing potion. Don't worry, kind, I'm coming to Kind you. of, kind okay. of, yeah. Yeah. So... I'm going to kind of back up almost to where Maya is. I can only move 15 feet, but it'll get me a little further away from the golem. Okay. And I'd like to lean down to Lucy and say, Lucy, you don't want to, you don't want to be in here. Right. And I'm going to ask Lucy to go invisible and then run up on the little dais where Leopold is. Run up his robe and tickle him to distract him. Okay. Um, make a persuasion check for me with advantage. And that 20 plus four, 24. Okay. Uh, as you ask Lucy to do this, uh, you look at Lucy and Lucy actually has a smile on her face, which is kind of frightening considering that she's a quasi, just like lots of fangs and it just it doesn't look right. Um, and she goes, yes, master. And immediately disappears. Um, 
just so she was very she knows very clearly not to hurt him just to tickle him and distract him yep all right um so that that's your turn uh at the end of your turn um make a wisdom saving throw for yourself and lucy to see if you can shake off the effect 13 again 13 you are still affected and what about lucy Five. Yeah, you're both still affected. So you you figure that Lucy's gonna take a little bit of time to get to uh, to Leopold, considering that she's also slow. But that's your that was your bonus action to do that with Lucy. She has forty feet of movement, so she could probably get uh, right up to him, and that would still be half. Well, well, no, because he's eighty feet up. So she Oh, would, okay. Yeah, he's 80 feet up in the in the stands. So it, it's hard. Yeah, I know it's hard. Like the, the perspective is a little weird on the map, but it, the walls are like 80 feet high. And he's on the top of those walls. Okay. Uh, the action I'm going to hold is for when Galen gets close enough to me to give him the healing potion. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, actually, no, you can't do that because you are still slowed. You can only do an action or a bonus action. You did the okay. bonus action to get Lucy, so you, you you can't actually do that. You'd have to wait till your full turn to do that next time. Can I just hold the healing potion in my hand and he could possibly just steal it from me? Yeah, you can hold it in your hand. That's that's no problem. Okay. All righty. Uh, so we're back at the top of the round. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take our break. Um so we'll be back in a few minutes um, as this this battle still uh, ensues and continues. Um, you know, seems like the tides are turning. We'll we'll see. Uh, but definitely, everybody who's been handing out inspirations has been helping out. Uh, so keep doing that. Uh, but like I said, we'll be right back and stick with us so we can see what happens later. All right, we'll see you in a few.
All right, folks, we are back. Uh, sorry, we had some technical difficulties, but they seem to be have. They seem to be have fixed already. Can't speak words. Um, all right. So with that, uh, we now continue the pit of death battle. And we start at the top of the round. It is Norman's turn. Norman <laughs> runs up behind the stone golem. Help action! Tink, tink, tink. Just keeps poking it in the head with his sword. That is Norman's turn. Uh, you all hear, uh, by the way, whenever Norman does that, you can all hear Leopold kind of giggling every time that happens. Like, it's just that, like, he's have Leopold seems to be having a lot of fun um, at this moment. Um, all right, so that leads us up to Galen. It is now your turn. Hold on, I'm, I'm getting everything all set up. Sure, sure, sure. It's kind of like... Loading in the map. No problem. And for and I just want to say real quick for those who might be like, you know, who were here last week and kind of heard the crowds like going, ooh, and ah, oh, and booing and clapping and all that stuff. Um, the reason why you're not hearing that is because there are some issues with my with my soundboard. So that's why you're not hearing. It. But that all of that is still happening while the crowd while every everybody is fighting like these spectral images of people in the stands are still kind of like cheering and crap uh, you know sometimes booing depending on what happens but actually within the last uh like 10 or 15 minutes of this battle you've been hearing mostly cheering and people just kind of clapping seemingly happy with uh the progress you have been making in this battle so, Galen, what would you like to do with your turn? Um, I'm going to steal the um, potion as she has, like, blatantly that, that Leah has taken out. So I'm going to run up to her. Uh, this path that I'm highlighting here shows my path towards her. Okay. I, if I'm going between these two... He will, he, you will be passing within his melee range and he can take an attack of opportunity. Hmm. And I can't just go through the hole unless I want to jump. You can try and jump over the hole if you want. Hmm. Mm. Mm. This way and that way. Um, hold on. Let me, let me check my character sheet real quick with long jumping because I know I can do that. But well, is that's... that the key? Yeah, that's that's your step of the wind doubles your jump, uh, but uh, if you are out of key points, you won't be able to use it. All right, so jumping's not an action; it's a movement, correct? It's part of your movement, but you you would ha you're definitely gonna have to roll a dexterity check, uh, and that's gonna determine exactly what happens during the jump and how much movement you actually use. Okay. So jump or take damage or risk falling into a 10 foot hole. Decisions, yeah, decisions. So you're going to jump. All right. I'm going to jump. Yes. My All friend. right. So make me a dexterity check, please. Actually, this would be. I'm going to say this is going to be acrobatics. Yeah. It's definitely going to be acrobatics. Twenty, not natural. All right, easy enough. You clear the hole, jump over it, and only cost you five feet of movement, like a normal, like if, as if it was not even there. So you can continue with your movement to where you'd like to go. Alright, I'm by Leah, and I will use my action to take the potion of healing and yep. just chug it down. Alright, like so there's no tomorrow. Yep, action to grab it, bonus action to chug it. That's uh, 2d4 plus 2. 
So for healing, do I roll just 2d4? Yeah, 2d4 plus 2. Seven hit points, so I'm back to 18. All right. So you are healed up, uh, but that is your whole uh, turn. It is now Squall's turn. Unfortunately, he has not returned yet. Um, so what we'll do is we'll actually we'll skip to the next person, and hopefully by the time that person is done with their turn, uh, he will be back and he can use his turn. So, uh, next up is Jarena. Okie dokie. I am going to use my action to pick up that bow. Mm hmm. And I am going to move towards Phoebe. 5, 10, 15. Okay. And I'm going to say, here, take this, give me that. And I'm going to end my turn. Okay. So, Jarena, the minute you, you pick up the bow, uh, you know that it is a long, long bow plus one. And you hand it, you're, you're handing it to Phoebe? Yes. All right. Um, so when Phoebe, when you grab it, you'll know that it's a long bow plus one. Um, okay. Make sure you put that in your inventory. Again, wait till your turn to actually do that. Um, okay. Um, I ha- I hand her the tentacle rod. Well, no, you have to, you have to wait till your okay. turn. You have to wait till your turn. Okay. So she's like, here you go. And she's like in the process of giving it. So that's where we're at. Uh, is that it, Jarena? Yes. All right. All right. Squall, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Just to be clear, those orange circles on the map, are they supposed to represent openings? No, those are, those are fires and braziers, like these metal braziers. Uh, and the fire, the fires are just kind of going up. Uh, I'm uh, five, ten. Okay, so I'm going to move over here and attempt to restrain them with this rope by saying the the, the magic word restraint. Send it out. Oh, you you picked it up because it was on the ground. Remember. Doesn't it, doesn't it stay in my hand? Hold on, I'm just, um, I'm just, I'm double checking. Hold on a second. Actually, it doesn't say, but I will say that it stayed in your hand. Not a problem. Like, yeah, I, I envision like I held, cause like the way it says it, it's like it extends from one end. Like I hold one end and it extends out to the other end. Okay. Yeah. So we'll yeah, say, so yeah, we'll say, like one yeah, we'll say that it was in your hand. Not a problem. Okay. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Okay. Uh, so you use the the word uh, restraint. Right. Right. I believe that that was the that was the go word. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is a DC was a DC fifteen, right? Yep. Okay. Um, dexterity. Not very dexterous. This stone golem is. And that is a two. Okay. So you watch as you extend the rope of entanglement uh, and say the word. It extends around and just wraps around him. And you watch as his arms are now just completely uh, just to his sides. um, And he is not moving. He is considered restrained. Um. Which means, just so everybody knows what that means, uh, speed is zero, which means he can't move. Um, his attack roll, attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature, while the creature can actually still attack, those rolls have disadvantage, uh, and the creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Um, but he can, at the end of his turn, um, let's see. Well, he can, as an action, try to um, try to get out of it by next turn. But until his turn comes around again, he is currently restrained. 
I... I'll manifest my echo as a bonus action. And I don't... I no magic other, otherwise. Alright. Um... Let's see. Manifest your echo. Where do you want him? Like, one square in front of me. Oh, right. Where did he go? Right, let's just pull him up real quick. Yeah, apparently, uh, Owlbear dated. And I'm just trying to find everybody again. There we go. There you are. What's happening? What's happening? Something's happening. Hold on. <laughs> I apologize, everybody. Trying to make things happen. Is that not working? Sorry, folks. Ah, there he is. Yeah, here he goes. All right. Uh, so I'm sorry. Where did you want him again? Right in front of me. Right in front. One of square. Me. Yeah. Boom. There you go. I'm gonna end my turn. Alrighty. Not sure. The magic guide options. Okay. One second. All right, so Jarena already went. Um, so that means... Currently... Hold on a second. Always technical difficulties when... Things need to happen, folks. All right. All right, so Jarena went. That means it is the Stone Golem's turn. It's not much he can do. Um, he is currently restrained. Let's indicate that with the, another little border there. Um, can't move. He could try to attack. If there's somebody next to him. Um, yeah, he's going to try. He's going to try and get out of this out of the rope. Because it's the only thing he can do at the moment. Sorry, folks. All right. Here we go. Okay. So. That's going to be. You can use athletics or acrobatics. He's going to try his strength. That is a 25. So with a 25, you watch as he... <clears throat> and just kind of looses the ropes, stretches his arms out, and it just it falls to the ground. Um, he is no longer restrained, but that was his whole turn, just to get out of that. So that is his turn. Is Norman still poking him? Uh, Norman is still poking. Absolutely poking. <laughs> poke, poke, poke. All right. So. 
With that out of the way and him no longer able to do anything, Phoebe, it is now your turn. Rowan, Sorry, you're after. Glitching. No problem. Uh, so, Phoebe, uh, you're up. Rowan, you're on deck. All right. So, as my action, I'm going to pass the tentacle rod to Jarena. Okay. And then I'm going to run my full uh, distance towards Sora. Okay, Did you take the bow? Yeah, I took the bow. Okay. So, that's your action. Uh, and then your movement. So, yeah, Jarena, tentacle rod. You put that in your inventory. Got it. All right, and for you, Phoebe, longbow plus one. Okie dokie. So that's your movement and your action. You have a bonus action, or is that it? That's it. All Alrighty, Rowan, you are up. Sora, you're after Rome. Hang on a second. I have to look at the battle map real quick. Kidoki. Um, she wants to cast Entangle again, but I don't want to catch anyone in it that is an ally. Okay. In that area? Yes. I don't want to trap Norman, you know? Okay. Alrighty. So you cast Entangle. That's going to be... All right, so you cast Entangle. Uh, what is the DC on that? It's not very high. It's 14. So strength strength 14, right? All right, he rolled a 7. I am going to use one of my DM inspirations oh. to re-roll that. And that's a 10. Um, so wow. it didn't even matter. Uh, but thank you for the inspiration. Um, <laughs> uh, but he is now currently entangled in the vines. He can make a check at the end, I believe at the end of his turn. Try and get out of that as well. But he is currently enfeebled and entangled by those vines. The blue goes back up. And Rowan is concentrating. So she gets a little circle. Alrighty. Um, so he is also considered restrained once again. While he's entangled in these vines. So attacks against him have advantage. And yeah, all that good stuff that he had under the, the rope. DM? Yes. Quick question. Shoot. Is perception using perception in action? It depends on what I'm ask if I'm asking you to do it or if you ask. Me. Okay. Sometimes if I ask you to do it, it's a free action because it would be something that you probably might see or might not see. Um, but if you're specifically asking to do something, it would probably be an action. Okay, thank you. No problem. All righty. So, uh, is there anything you want to move, Rowan? You want to go anyplace else before your, your turn ends? No, I think I'm good where I am. Okay. All righty. Uh, so, Sara, it is now your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to move over to Phoebe. Okay. Pass her the arrows. Alrighty. 
And I was going to use perception again, but that's already in action. So I end my turn. Well, considering, yeah, I will say, yeah. So you hand her the arrows. Uh, you have movement if you want to move. You good where you're at? Okay. Yep. All righty. All right, so that's Sora's turn. Leah, it is now your turn. I'm assuming the body that's behind uh, Norman hasn't been looted yet because they were standing on top of it. Yeah, that guy. Uh, you're not sure. Because you, okay. you've, you've kind of been in that back area. You're not sure if the, uh, before earlier there was like a lot of a lot of stuff going on in that area. So you're not entirely sure. Actually, I will say make a this will be a perception check to see if you actually witnessed anything going on in that area during the fight. Okay. Twenty one. Twenty one. Uh, yeah, you saw uh, you saw Galen turn the body over and him pull something from the body. OK, and all the pillars have been looted, correct? As far as you know, yeah. So you did there's, say there was still. There's still this body. Oh, wait, no, that's been looted. Never mind. You said there was some writing on the uh, walls by where Leopold was standing? Mm-hmm. Can I go over and investigate that? Uh, yeah, sure. So you're still slowed. So, okay. you, but you can get there. You have 15 feet of movement. It'll get you, it'll get you to one of the one of the rising hills. Okay. So like right here. Um, yeah, you get there and you can see some words. What languages do you speak? Oh, let me check real quick. I, I speak Thieves Cant and I know I speak something else. Where would I find it? Um, it's in your proficiencies. It's like in the first page towards the, the lower left hand bottom. Just say proficiencies and languages. Common and thieves can't. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not thieves can't. Um, it's definitely a language you don't speak. But considering, I'll say, considering some of the things that you've done so far, uh, you do recognize it as probably draconic. Okay. As, because while you were at Zarzeth, Zarzeth Kittrell, you saw a lot of draconic like language around places. So you could tell that it's draconic, but you can't read what it says. Is there anything else around that I can read? You can see that on this pillar over here uh, that there seems to also be writing, but you'd have to get closer to see what it says. And I'm done with the movement. Okay. Um, I can't move anymore, right? Yeah, no. And the investigation was your action. You could say, okay. like, if you wanted to say something to everybody, like, you know, talking, you know, very quickly, that's a free action. You can do that. Um, How far away is Sora? Because I don't even see her. She. Oh, well, she's... I'm she's, directly... No, that's... Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah no, directly she's, across from you. Yeah, she's right here. Uh, and you can see her across this gate. And she's she's the dragonborn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Sora. There's some writing on this pillar that looks draconic. If you can read it, and that's the end of my turn. Okay. All right. All righty. So top of the round, it is Norman's turn. Um, Norman looks down at these vines that have sprung up and are kind of wrapping around the uh, the stone golem. Um, turns and kind of looks at Leopold for a minute and then turns back and begins to continue poking the stone golem in the head, but faster. Uh, and continues to use the help action uh, because it seems like that's that's kind of what he's doing. 
Um, all right. So, Galen, it is now your turn. So, the head of the golem is just floating there, right? Or is it connected? Oh, no, it's connected. Oh. It's not floating, it's connected. Hmm. And it's not, like, delicately connected. It's, like, solidly, like, embedded. In yeah, that? yeah. Okay. It's, it's like, there is a huge, thick, like, rock neck uh, connected to the head and to the rest of the body. Okay. Is that... Mm, all right. Um, hmm. <sighs> hmm. What are you doing, Galen? Ah. Uh... Um, I guess, hmm, yeah, uh, all right, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run over here, Okay. taking this path, and will that put me in, uh, that'll, that'll put me in fighting distance of him, right? And, yeah, you'd get in melee range, but you would also be inside of the entanglement. Just by being in here? Yep. That's just difficult terrain, or do I have to fight off the... Uh... It, it would be considered difficult terrain for you. Okay. All right, yeah, that's oh. fine. Oh, Leah. I didn't get to roll my wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay, please, yeah, please. Uh, roll your wisdom saving throw for you and for Lucy. Sixteen plus two is eighteen. You are no longer affected by the slow spell as you shake off the effect. Is Lucy any closer to the wizard? Lucy rolled a nineteen. Lucy is now unaffected by the slow spell as well, and you're unsure how close Lucy is because Lucy is invisible. So, um. Alrighty, so that is all right, so Galen, what are you so what are you doing? Are you getting in there? Yeah, and as I pass by somebody I'm like uh bef before I, I I just talked to the to uh Squall and Rowan and I'm like try and find something to see if there's a way to kill it faster. Maybe we could use the hole or something while it's entangled. I don't know what to do. I only got this stinky knife doing damage. And so I continue to run, and uh, I, I, I do a little bit of stabbing. Okay, go for it. Do I have advantage? Um, yeah, because Norman is giving you the help action. Okay, I'm going to keep going at the leg I damaged before. I'll take it. That's uh, 16 plus 8. That's, uh, what? That, that, that'll hit. Yeah, that, that'll definitely hit, yeah. Eight damage. Eight damage, yes. Uh, you, as you stab at it, it definitely takes a chunk of rock off of it. Um, but it is still up, um, but it's looking like it's lost a lot of, like, rock, um, in mostly, like, the chest area. You've been going at the leg a little bit, around the head and neck area. Um, it's still together, it's still up, but it's definitely looks a lot worse than it was when it first started. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to do, um... Wait, hold on. Does, uh... Hold on. Does martial arts... Now, you know, I'm... I'm just going to use my, um... Offhand, that's what it's called, to to attack as a bonus action. With what weapon? It can't be the With same the same weapon. dagger. You, can, oh, it, can't? you can't? No, it has to be a different weapon. Um, and it's usually... Either since you use a dagger in one hand, it can only be a dagger in the other. It can't be a larger uh, weapon. 
can't be a large range. And it can't be the same weapon. You you can't like switch hands. It doesn't doesn't work like that. All right. Well, I'll. It, it may not do it. may not do anything, but I'm just gonna punt. I'm just gonna kick at them like I stab and then I kick. Like so a, so an unarmed strike. Yeah, I'm gonna do an unarmed strike. Okay. Does it? What's the matter, Squat? What? Does doesn't he get a free unarmed strike as a punk? No, he has to. That's his uh, flurry of blows, and then he oh. has he has to actually use a key point for that, which he's out of. God. And um, the other thing is, is if I used two fists, then that's when the uh, the normal strike as a bonus action kicks in. I think, right? Or is that when I attack and then I can use a bonus action to use the full effect? Um, that's in martial arts, so I need to find that. Yeah. Because I know if I punch, I can punch again as a bonus action. And, right. But I don't know if I can stab and then punch and do the same thing. Um, no, it would just be a stab and a punch. Oh. It would be without the proficiency? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that would be 23 would be the damage. That, that does, yeah, that does hit. Yeah, okay. And I'm guessing it does nothing? Uh, yeah, that does no damage to him whatsoever. Okay, well, until he breaks free, that's what I'm going to be doing to it, until somebody finds a better way of enduring it. All right. Uh, Squall, it is now your turn. I I am at a loss for what I can do without any magic options. I, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to shout that out. I'm going to say, I don't know what to do. And yeah, I I don't know. That's it. I'm gonna end my turn because I really am completely at a loss. There okay. is a hole. Yeah, I see the hole. I guess, but Close it's still it very, and, yeah, very far away. But yeah, that's yeah. I don't know what to do. Okay, so you're just gonna you're just gonna stand there. I don't know what to do. Yeah, you can you can, I, I, you can try to also give uh, the help action. You can take the dodge action. Um, there's, there's a couple things I you guess can I, do. I guess well, I can hold the dodge action, right? Like, well, you... no. If if you if you use the dodge action, essentially you're you're def you're defending yourself, and the next attack on you will be at disadvantage. And rather, I I'm just gonna here five ten fifteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to move around. That's it. All I'm doing. Okay. No problem. All righty. So next up is Jarena. Okay. What I am going to do is I am going to look right at this golem and I am going to use from my torque of blasting, um, my scorching ray, uh, I'm, I'm going to roll it from my attack, but in the description from the torque, it says it's plus five, not plus four. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just add an extra to this roll. Alrighty. That is a 23 not natural to hit. That hits. Okay. And that is a three damage total. Okay. Fire damage. Uh. So there, those are three blasts from. Oh. So you can roll two more times. Oh, okay. So that's a three. Then that's a ten. Wait, wait, no. You have to roll each hit. Oh, so yeah. That, it, I have to roll two d six. No, no, no. You have to roll to hit three times. So you only roll to hit him once. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Um, so the first one. So the second one is a 16 to hit. That does not hit. Okay. The third one is a uh, 24 not natural to hit. That does hit. So tech two of the hits hit. Yeah, so you already, I, you already took damage from the first one, missed with the second, and now you just have to roll damage for the third. Okay, so the third damage is going to be 11. 11. 
Yeah, so you feel the torque actually heat up around your neck. Um, and it's not uncomfortable, like it's burning you, but it's just warm. Um, and you watch as your hand begins to glow red and you just put your hand out and three fire rays just extend from your hand. The first hits blasting a piece of rock off of the shoulder. The second actually hits the ground by its foot, but does not actually hit it. The third blows another piece from its chest off onto the ground. It's looking pretty hurt. Jarena, I didn't know you could do that. It's new, and I'm just gonna move myself uh... 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, right over there. All right. Okay, it is my turn. All right, it is now the Stone Golem's turn. All right, he is going to use his action to try and get out of the Entangle spell. Uh, what is the DC on that again, uh, Rowan? Is it 12? Four, 14. 14. All right. All right, that is a 16. Uh, you watch as he begins to tear all of the, all of the, the, the vines off of him, and he is now unentangled. Um, he will, well, he can't do, he's going to attempt to recharge his slow spell. But which, damn, isn't he entangled in the rope too? No, so. he actually got out of that already. Oh, okay. I missed that. Sorry. Okay. So he does recharge his slow, uh, spell, but he uses action to get out of the entanglement. So he cannot use it yet. Um, but he is going to try and get out of it. Uh, so that is going to be, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, yeah, as he moves all out of the entangles, the area. Um, attack be, of opportunity? Yeah, you can take an attack of opportunity. And I still have advantage because of the health action, right? Um, no, uh, it, it was only, it was only good for the first attack. Got it. I'm assuming you're using the dagger for this. So what was uh, that? I believe that is 20 non-natural. No, 21. Yep, yep that hits. Okay. Roll damage. Another eight damage. Another eight damage. As uh, the stone golem runs from you, uh, you dig the dagger into its left butt cheek uh, and carve a slice of rock butt cheek off as it falls to the ground and it continues to run out of the entanglement um, and begins to round the corner of the column. Um... Still up, still not looking very, very uh, put together as he once was, but still very dangerous. Um, and that is all he can do on his turn. Um, Phoebe, it is now your turn. Okay, I'm going to... Wait, did Sorg already give me the quiver and bow or arrows? Sorry. Sora. Yeah, I give her the quiver. Okay. She already has the bow. All right. So yeah, so you have you have the bow and you have the quiver. Uh, as you touch the arrows, the arrows are arrows plus one. Okay. All right, so what are you doing? Can 
I give Phoebe my inspiration? Um, is it a group inspiration or is it specifically for you? It's specifically for me. Uh, then you cannot, unfortunately. That's why there's a group inspiration. Okay. That was very sweet of, of you to ask. Do we have a group inspiration? Or did we use it? I know we used a couple. Um, so, just to be clear, these items are not magic, correct? They are magical. Okay, so I don't have to attune to them. Well, if you normally had to, you are instantly attuned to them. Okay. But the arrows and the longbow do not require attunement. Okay, got it. So, I am going to use the longbow plus one and the arrows plus one. Okay. So, roll for your attack. And for those who are confused, um, originally my regular longbow has uh, plus nine uh, DC. The longbow, longbow plus one is now plus ten. <laughs> and with the arrows, it's plus eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's gonna be a big old twenty-two. Not that. Bad. That hits. For the record, Phoebe now has a uh, player inspiration. And. Um, that's going to be plus, uh, that, that's going to be 12 damage. 12 damage. Uh, as you loose this arrow and it hits, uh, you watch, um, essentially a whole chunk of its neck just blow off. Um, its head kind of like now on a very odd angle. Um but still looking and moving around. It looks pretty bad. But it definitely took all of that damage. All right, so what do you want to do? You have some movement. So I, I'm, I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to move my max movement, um, away from everyone else. So let me just count that out real quick. Okay, move over here. All right. And that's it. Uh, Phoebe, make me a perception check. Eighteen. Eighteen. You can see writing on this riser here. Uh, what languages do you speak? I speak Celestial, Common, Elvish, and Sylvan. You see on that pillar in Celestial, it says, look in the fucking gates. And that's it. All right. Uh, so that is your turn, Do Phoebe. Celestials, I have a question. Celestials yeah. can say fuck? <laughs> this one it's does. It's just a language. It's a language. It's not an it's, angel it's saying like, it or a celestial. It's it, it's a language. You can write anything in a language. Let me put it Some to you this way, Some languages don't have words. Let me, put it, let, me put it to, let me put it to you this way. If it's Leopold's arena, chances are he wrote it. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, you know, some languages wouldn't have swear words, and I would think Celestial would be one of them. It depends on the person who's writing it. If it was Leopold, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, so that is, that was Phoebe's turn. Rowan, it is now your turn.
Running out of spell slots. Rowan's going to drop the entangle. Okay. And she can't cast it again. Um, <laughs> All right. So Entangle is down. Yeah, Entangle is down. And how far away am I, am I from the golem? I'm pretty far. Um. Maybe about have, 35, 40 feet. I have... Um... Let me see. I have something that says range area 10 feet. What is the thing? It is Earth Tremor, and I've never used it before. That sounds useful. Okay. So okay. it says if it says range ten feet, mm -hmm. you would have to be within ten feet to cast it on whatever you're trying to cast it on. All right, so I'm gonna go to, um, yeah, I guess I have to approach the golem. <laughs> Great. Okay. Okay, so I want to go to the the pillar that the golem is next to. All and right. Cast it. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to be where the blood stain is. I want to be on the other side. On the other side. All right. So other side right, of the blood stain. So right there. Yeah. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah. ne then you're gonna cast Earth Tremor. Yeah, and I'm I'm just gonna focus it in the the area where the golem is. Okay, yeah, you can absolutely do that. You are at within five feet of it instead of ten. So go for it. Okay. So you cast it. I actually have to make a dexterity saving throw. Your DC is 14? Right? Yes. Okay, so that is a nine. That is a failure. Okay. So now uh, it says the creature takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage. It is not prone. If the ground in the area is loose earth or stone, it becomes difficult terrain until cleared. Would it be loose earth or stone, or is it just like a sandy pit? It's sand. I would consider that loose earth. Okay. Okay. It becomes difficult terrain until cleared, with each five foot diameter portion requiring at least a minute to clear by hand. All right. So okay. it would, it would so only be two, like two squares. That would be that. Um, now, will, will it won't take bludgeoning damage because it's not magic damage. Is that correct? Um, let me just double check. Uh, that is true. It will not take the damage, but it will be knocked prone. Okay, so he's down. Right, so, uh, as he falls, yeah, he even makes that nut. Yeah. Um, and these two squares here um, are the difficult terrain from your spell. Uh, and it is definitely within that. So if it needs to get up, it's, it's going to it's gonna be hard to get up for. Them. So that was actually a great, great spell to cast at it. Well, uh, now Rowan wants to get the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> so she would like to move back again. <laughs> All right, so you're going to move back. He will take an attack of opportunity on you. Uh, oh, am I in, I'm I'm in within melee? You are within melee, yeah. But it's going to uh -oh. be at this it's going to be at disadvantage because he is prone uh currently. I'm still quite squishy. So do you want to stay where you're at? You can do that. I'll just stay there. Yeah. Okay, so you stay there. All right. No problem. All right, Sara, it is now your turn. Um, did Phoebe holler out what uh, what was said on the wall? Uh, no, she did not. <sighs> All right. Well, I am next to the the grate. Can I roll perception? All right. So 
this it's a little bit metagaming because that's not you wouldn't have done that if you no, didn't hear for, uh, roll perception for the uh the writing on the wall oh oh you're looking oh so you're looking for the writing on the wall right. it wouldn't be it wouldn't on be the at the great yeah it wouldn't be at the great it'd be on the no i said i was right next to the great and my oh i'm sorry the wall i misunderstood i'm sorry uh so okay so you look at you'd have to get closer uh so you'd have to move over to where uh leah is you can run over the grate if you want it'll be considered difficult terrain uh but you can get there if you want to is that all right uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. It would actually be here that you can get to, and that'd be your full move. Am I close uh, enough? Uh, yeah, you're definitely close enough. You look at it, uh, and it says, look in the fucking fire. In the fire? That's what it says. Uh, guys, it says, look in the fire. Point okay. of order. It says, look in the fucking fire. But I, I know that's not what you're saying. I, it says, look in the fucking fire. You know Leo wrote this. Come on. <laughs> Uncle Leo. All right. So that's what you see um, as you run up. Uh, that's not your action. I'm not going to say read it. reading that is not your action. You already, you know, it was pointed out to you. You read it real quick. Uh, what would you like to do now? Um, I am going to cast Ray of Frost at Leo. Okay. So roll, is that a attack spell or? Let's see. It is an action instantaneous. Um... Uh, range spell attack against the target. So you have to roll for an attack. Wow, my rolls are crappy. Uh, do we have a, a group inspiration I can use? Yes. Much better. Um, 17 plus 5, so that is 22. That definitely hits. Groovy left. And, Gru yeah. Gru said, fuck all of you, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a 4. For frost damage? Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second while I try to get Groovy's ass back in here. Um, Damn it says bards. It, He's like, I don't says, want to... <laughs> Excuse me. It says uh, hit DC five, so it would be nine. So nine damage. Yes. Okay. All right. What happened to Sean? Well, Groovy just covered my camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you just disappeared like Groovy did. All right. Your, so... in your invisibility spell is amazing. Now, Groovy disconnected and screwed up. Yeah. I don't know. It looks, yeah. That's fine. We're figuring it out. We're figuring it out. All right. There we go. So, um, all right. So, Leah does have advantage on a wisdom saving throw because um, he's a warcaster. Natural 20. Uh, yeah. Uh, he takes the hit. He goes, whoa. <laughs> That's, That's a great, a great shot. shot. Uh, you watch as the flames on the braziers flicker down slightly and then continue to, to keep raised. All right. Um, so that is, that is your turn, Sara. Well, I yell at him. I'm like, yeah, well, I'm trying to distract you, fucker. <laughs> As you say that, he goes, <laughs> nice. nice. 
Alrighty, uh, Leah, it is now your turn. The golem is down. It's on the ground, still moving. There's, there's no damage I can do that would d disable it further. I don't know. You don't know. All right, I'll take a shot at it with my crossbow. Okay. But I'd, I'd like to move into a better line of sight. Sure. So uh, can I move myself? Yeah. And I'm going to take a shot at it with the crossbow. It's a 20, not natural. Okay. Well, normally it would hit, but you see that uh, your crossbow bolt just bounces off of it. Um, not doing any damage to it, unfortunately. So uh, you do have a you do have your bonus actions back now. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to take a bonus action, and do something else. You can't. Uh, no, I'm not a melee range, so he can't attack me, right? No, you're definitely not a melee range. Okay, so that's it. All right, so uh, we come to the top of the round. It is now Norman's turn. Uh, Norman. Um, isn't it uh, Lucy's turn? Or is she not there yet? Uh, sh as far as you can tell, nothing has happened yet. Okay. Uh, actually, hold on a second. Oh, no. Yeah, I can tell you exactly what happened. So you watch as uh, Leo goes, ah, 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 and... As he's casting, you watch as he reaches into the, one of his robe sleeves, pulls something out, and throws it. Uh, I need, uh, Leah, for you to uh, roll. Second. Um, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw for Lucy. Was a 19 plus 3? Uh, 22. Okay. Um, yeah, you watch as there's this, like, flash of light. Um, and then you hear Leopold. Ah, oh, you're a quick little fuck, aren't you? <laughs> um, but you don't see anything. Um, and that's, that's the end of the turn. Um... You get the impression that Leo sees Lucy, invisible or not. Um, all right, it is now Norman's turn. Norman, what are you gonna do now, Norman? Huh, Norman? Norman turns and looks at Leopold. I'm gonna make a roll. Okay. Um, and you watch uh, Leopold just kind of nod at him. And he goes, All right, All right go, go nuts. nuts. And Norman is going to run up to the stone golem and is going to actually take a swing at him with his big ass sword. Uh, he's going to take two swings at him. So the first one is going to be, oh yeah, 26. That definitely hits. And he hits for, ooh. wow, that's, uh, that's 26 damage. Uh, is he cleft in twain? No, but a huge piece of uh, stone just goes flying from the chest. Um, 
And then he's going to take another swing. Yeah, it's a 29 to hit. Uh, and he is going to do... Ooh, 27 damage. Uh, and yeah, this, the golem barely looks like it's standing. Um, piece, most of its chest is gone. There's like small pieces just holding it together. Um, but it is still moving on the ground. Um, and Norman just kind of looks at Leo and just holds his arms up and then puts him down. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, Galen, it is now your turn. Uh, well, seeing how I can finally do damage to this thing, I'm going to go up to it and it's still on the ground, right? Yeah. So you will actually have advantage while it is prone on the ground. All right, I make it there. All right. Can I attack his head? If you make very specific attacks, it will be at disadvantage okay. because they're pointed attacks. You can just attack. But, it will do the same thing but without the disadvantage. But he is prone, so I have advantage, so that's just a straight roll. You can do that if you want. I just want to make sure you remember that. Yeah, I, I, his head... His head is like weakened off and whatnot. I want to make sure that it's completely off. That is my specific right, but, goal. Right. That's yes. a very yeah. That's a very specific yes. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to. Uh, and just double checking, we don't have any uh, character bonus points or any or uh, advantage points or anything. Correct. Oh, you mean the inspirations? Inspirations that yes. Uh, yeah. There's. It looks like there's one for Phoebe, one for Rowan. And one still for me. Okay. Uh, already then. Scalen, uh, don't we'll you do... have advantage because he's prone? Yeah, mm -hmm. but, the, but, but it cancels out. Specific. It cancels yeah, so out. It's, so it's a straight roll. Yeah, it's a straight roll. That's I know that. I was just checking if we had any spare so that I could do more. All right. Here we go. Here goes nothing. Don't get greedy. Seven. Unfortunately, that's not a nat 20. Say that again. How 27. much? 27. 27. Okay, I heard. I only heard seven. I was like, oh. All right, so 27. All right. Uh, so roll for damage. Yep. Nine damage. Nine damage. Uh, how do you want to take this golem down? I decapitate him with one quick uh, cut and his head just rolls off all the power goes off and he just collapses into a pile of rocks okay yeah so easy enough because there was already sustained damage to the neck uh you just carve into the rock uh the dagger magical dagger biting into it and just severing it as it does you hear and you watch as the, the light gets brighter and brighter and brighter and it's almost blinding and you kind of have to put your hand up to your face and then you hear and then pieces just begin falling away from it as the head rolls off and the light begins to dissipate and disappear it is no longer Norman uh, sees this runs over and leaps up back next to Leopold up on the counter um, and you all hear Um, Lucy takes 
one mm. blood one bludgeoning damage. Um, as apparently Norman didn't see Lucy and might have jumped on. <laughs> um. So, uh, with that done, and the crowd is just going wild and just like woo. <sighs> um. You watch as the rock that is left of this stone golem begins to just disappear and fade into nothingness. And as that happens, uh, you hear um, uh, you hear Leopold. All right, all right. All right. That was uh, that was an interesting fight to behold. Not for anything, man. That was a uh, touch and go there for a while, but you kind of pulled it out there at the end. Not gonna lie, you have the the grace and dexterity of a group of drunken monkeys, but somehow you pulled it out of your ass. Some of you actually took my lessons and used them. Well, that's good. Because I'm giving you all 15 minutes before round three starts. And you hear, and you hear the crowd just... And that is where we are going to call it for the evening. I had things to do, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh we have mysteries to solve. Uh, uh, conspiracies to uncover. A war to end. To discover. Alrighty. So, uh, great game, everybody. Um, uh, you, you you guys pulled that out by the skin of your teeth, man. But that was great. That was great. It was touch and go there for some stuff. Uh, but yeah, um, that was great. You, there's still another round, apparently, uh, to go, uh, according to Leo. Um, and that is actually we're going to pick it up for next week. Um, see exactly... What happens? Uh, actually, hold on. Let me just take a look real quick. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So next week, pit of death round three. Um, want to do a couple uh, shout outs uh, very quickly for everybody who contributed. Um, Ocelotus, <sighs> thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs. Damn, man. Damn. Um, so and I want to say Alpha Lotus has also started streaming. So if you haven't already, throw that man a follow because he's amazing. Yes, absolutely. Ocelotta77, who is in our chat and one of the most generous people uh, I know. Uh, definitely, please, if you have not followed Ocelotta on his channel, he's just started streaming. Uh, please uh, give him a follow. Uh, support what he's doing, help him out um, as he is getting off the ground, his 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 stream. So please show him some love. Um, but Asalatus gifted subs to all the bishops. Tavari Luta, Call Me Peter Jr., Lexi Shira, and Koi Tiger Design. So thank you for those subs. Thank you for the 1,000 bits. Um... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to DM for an incredibly positive and creative way to teach the players how to wipe. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's actually my intention, but if that's how it's read, you know, that's okay too. Um, also, Ocelotus, thank you for resubbing again at the tier two level for five months. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, and two to your head. Thank you so much for the raid, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Love you so much. Um, and and everyone here, thank you so much uh, for just watching and supporting everything that we're doing. 
Uh, again, a, a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon who, again, their support is, is very key uh, to allowing us to do so many different things and continue to do what we're doing. Adding streams, adding content, like our patron Patreons, thank you so much for that. Um, and everybody who gave inspirations out today, thank you so much for that too. Uh, that is a really great mechanic. Again, I, I, I kind of, uh, I kind of nicked that from, from Gene over at Unconventional Heroes. Uh, it's an amazing thing. We might actually be adding onto it in the future, uh, just to kind of give you like a little, maybe like a little sneak preview, but we, we're still play testing this and seeing if it works so far. It's working great. And thank you for everybody for, for participating in that. It's really great that you do. Um, we also, again, uh, just as a reminder, tomorrow, Friday Night Magic, 8 p.m., uh, we unlocked our new community challenge, uh, which is the new uh, voice mod, uh, Voice the Cyber Robot. Uh, I will actually uh, give a demonstration so you all know what it sounds like. Hold on a second. Give us a taste. Uh, so it... When you hear it, you'll recognize what it is uh, due to probably, you know, because I don't own the rights to it. I can't say exactly what it is, uh, but it sounds like a robot from a cyber world that you might have seen either in cartoons during the 80s or very bad Michael Bay movies. Uh, but it sounds something like this. I am a robot from a plan call a planet called Cyber Something, and I come to this planet for energy. That's just a taste, but that's exact. That's what everybody <laughs> was able to help in the community unlock. So thank you so much for that. That you can actually redeem in our in the magic stream tomorrow uh, for channel points as well. Um, <laughs> But thank you so much for all of the all of the support that everybody's given. Um, we're gonna continue to do all of the the, the, the good stuff. Um, and again, thank you so much to our sponsors. Uh, our sponsor never uh, never ending. Thank you again so much for sponsoring and working together with us. Um, it's it. I, I again, I love that NPC generator. Um, but thank you so much again for the sponsorship. We appreciate it, and we appreciate all of you as well. Again, let's remember to be kind to each other, uh, kind to ourselves, and let's keep supporting all of the things that we love, supporting the people that do the things that they love. And uh, we love you very much, and we will see you next time. Take care. <laughs>